Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about atmospheric pressure, and specifically the famous equation, pressure P equals density rho times G times H. So P is going to be the pressure of our fluid, usually measured in either pascals or kilopascals, which is just pascals divided by a thousand. Like for instance, if I have 5,000 pascals, well, to get to kilopascals, it's just like a kilometer, divide by a thousand, and that's five kilopascals. Or the other famous pressure unit we have is the ATM, where one ATM, atmospheric pressure is what that stands for, one ATM is equal to 101.3 kPa, kilopascals. So I'm going to be using a mix of these units today, just a heads up. Then, that is not a lowercase p or a curly cursive p, that is Greek letter rho. It is the density of my fluid. And remember, density is also equal to mass divided by volume. Although we're not going to be using this equation in today's video, but sometimes we need this one. G is the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 on Earth, different values on different planets or the moon. And then H is the height that we are in this fluid. And so that's basically the equation. Now let's do some practice problems to make sure we understand it. So for number one, I have an above ground pool. Let's say that pool is two meters high. And I would like to know the atmospheric pressure P at the bottom of the pool. So here's how we're going to solve this. First, writing the equation P equals rho GH is a good idea. I also need to give you the density of water which we are going to say is approximately 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, which is the units I want. So in other words, P equals 1,000 times G is 9.8. And then the height in this case, if we're looking at the bottom of the pool, we're going to use that 2 meters right there, so times 2. And plugging this in a calculator, we'll get 19,600. And the standard units, by the way, are pascals, which means if you want to convert this to kPa, it would be, divide by a thousand, 19.6 kPa. However, this is not the final answer. Why not? Because we also have to take into account the pressure of the atmosphere. So what I'm saying is the pressure at the top of the pool right here is one atm. We are going to assume it's one atm everywhere on the surface of a pool or a test tube or whatever. We just always use this number. I don't have a better explanation than that right now. But what's important is we basically want to add the two pressures together. So in other words, the rho GH we just found is specifically the pressure from the pool and we need to add it to the one ATM we're already starting at. So in other words, the total pressure is equal to one ATM which is 101,300 pascals plus the 19,600 pascals we had from earlier. And that will get us a final answer of 120,900 pascals. And there we go. That's how we do it. Now let's do a couple other famous problems when it comes to pressure. This next one is going to be known as the YouTube manometer. So fun fact for all of you out there, this is my first YouTube problem ever on YouTube. Haha. Ha. But anyways, here's what the setup's going to look like. I have this little flask looking thing that looks like this, where one end is exposed to air and the other end has a gas inside. Now the goal is we want to find the pressure of this gas right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this pipe in the lower part with water and because the gas and air have different pressures we actually get a height difference in the manometer. Let's say this height difference is going to be 12 centimeters and again the question is what's the pressure in the gas? If we know the pressure in air is again 1 atm or 101,300 pascals. I'm going to be using pascals for this one. But one thing I do want to mention before I do any calculations, if this was a conceptual question and the question just asked, 
which pressure is higher, the gas or air, I know it's going to be the gas. The reason why is I want you to imagine that the pressure is pushing down from this side and also from the air. And just like if I were to imagine myself pushing, you know, this water with my physical hands, if the left side is pushed down more, it means it's stronger. I repeat, if that side pushed down farther for the water, it means pressure of the gas must be greater than the pressure from air. And of course, if the reverse was true, if let's say the manometer looked like this, and now the air side is lower, well, then that means the pressure in the gas is therefore going to be lower than air for the same reason. But let's go back to the problem we were doing. And so the question is, how am I going to solve this? Well, here's what I like to say. The pressure at these two points where I just drew the exact same elevation, they need to have the same pressure. And so what that means, the pressure from that black dot, that's just the pressure from the gas. Easy. And I'm saying it needs to be equal to the pressure right there, which is going to be the pressure from the atmosphere plus rho gh for that distance underwater that we are. And by the way, if the situation were reversed and the left side water level was higher, then this rho gh right here would go on that side if the situation was reversed. But anyways, now I have everything I need. Pressure of the gas is going to be I'll keep it in Pascals, so 101,300 plus density of water, this is still 1,000, G is still 9.8, and the height, 12 centimeters, we do have to convert that to meters, so that's easy, 0.12, just divide by 100, and then we just need to plug this in a calculator, and we'll have the pressure of the gas. And that's going to be slightly higher than the atmosphere, 102,476 pascals and that's the answer and by the way if you wanted to know what the answer is in atms that's very easy you just have to divide this by the conversion factor which is 101 300 and that'll get us 1.01 atms of pressure so just slightly higher than what we normally experience every day when we go outside and then finally one more today it's another very famous example this is just a normal U-tube. And so literally it is a tube in the shape of a U, literally like this, nothing special. But what I'm going to do is, and you can try this experiment at home, I'm going to first fill the tube with water like this, and then I'm going to fill one side with vegetable oil, let's say. And what we're going to see happen is that over time, You'd think that the water levels would be equal on both sides, but the truth is they're not, as long as both of these YouTube ends are open and exposed to air. And again, it's because of that pressure that we were talking about earlier. But basically what we're going to see happen is that depending on the density of the other fluid, one side is going to be slightly higher than the other. In this case, the oil side is going to be higher and that's because it has a lower density than water, but we technically don't know that yet. My question is going to be if this distance is seven centimeters and then this distance here to the top is five centimeters, I want us to calculate the density of the oil given that this is still water, it's still 1000 kilogram per meter cubed. So how on earth are we gonna solve this one? So in order to solve this, we need to remember that trick we said earlier, and that is the pressure everywhere at the same elevation is going to be equal to each other. This pressure in red has to equal this pressure in red. So the pressure at that point right there is going to be the pressure from air, so 101, 300, plus rho gh. Rho, I don't know, I'm solving for it. G is 9.8, and the height is... 12 centimeters, 5 plus 7. So 12 centimeters. I should convert that to meters, right? So 0.12 there. That's going to be the pressure at that red dot. And then the pressure at this red dot, that's going to be, again, for air, 101,300 plus rho gh this time is going to be rho is 1,000, g is still 9.8, 
but the height is not as high as before. It's just the seven centimeters right here of the water, which is 0 0.07. And once again, I am going to set these two equal to each other because the pressures are equal. I immediately notice the 101, 300 will cancel on both sides. So rho 9.8.12 equals 1000 9.8 times 0.07. Looks like even the 9.8 will cancel, so this experiment could work on different planets, potentially. And then finally, I just have to divide both sides by 0.12 and plug this in a calculator. And that's gonna get me 583.3, and this is kilograms per meter cubed, and that is gonna be the density of our oil which in reality is much less dense than oil, but you know, I just make up my own numbers, so whatever. Hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you all for watching, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye bye